as the clock is ticking for the launch of Chandrayaan 3, all eyes are on Shri Hari Kota, but here in Mumbai, we are at the plant of Godrej Aerospace. This is where the Vikas engine, which is a part of Chandrayaan 3, is made. Right behind me is this Vikas engine, uh, which was in fact prepared by Godrej Aerospace and sent to ISRO every month for different projects, right from PSLV to Mangalyaan to Chandrayaan. Uh, such engines are passed on to ISRO. Apart from that, this particular one engine takes uh, approximately five months uh, to be prepared. At this plant is where this entire engine is prepared. We have with us Mr. Manik, who is the AVP and business head of Godrej Aerospace. We speak to him and understand what the process is, how are these engines made, and what has been Godrej's contribution towards ISRO over the last, uh, I think from 1980 onwards, is where we've been uh, So, sir, if you could just explain us as to how this Vikas engine is made, what is exactly the process, how, about, how it's followed and how did your team work towards uh, the engine? Right. Uh, we have been working with ISRO since 1985, as rightly put. And uh, Vikas has been uh, one of the main uh, workhorses uh, and the hardware for which is manufactured at uh, Godrej Aerospace since uh, almost two decades now. Uh, similar engine uh, is also will be going up uh, tomorrow. Uh, Vikas engine is uh, largely made up of uh, steel and uh, the process starts with uh, cutting the sheets on the laser and then uh, rolling them into various shapes, uh, welding and then uh, creating the, uh, the thrust chamber as we call it and then there are on the thrust chamber there are many other uh, machine components like pumps, turbines which are uh, assembled. What we do is we uh, manufacture as per uh, the design given by ISRO and uh, uh, then uh, do a sub-assembly and a sub-assembled hardware is then supplied to LPSC where it is integrated into the stage. Uh, so, so what exactly is happening around here? Like you know, on our left and on our right we are seeing that uh, there is some kind of uh, a sheet that's put out which is put into shape. If we, you know, for our viewers, for a common layman, if you have to explain how exactly is this particular uh, Vikas engine put forth, uh, how, would you ex how would we explain that, the process here on our left and our right? So uh, there is a machine called as a laser cutting where the, uh, where the, where the sheet is uh, cut into shape and then we uh, roll it over a, uh, over a CNC rolling machine. It takes the shape uh, and then after the roll is completed you do the welding on the right hand side what you see the seam welding which is going on and uh, similarly the other stages of the cone are prepared and then you weld it one over the other to create a final cone. And then there's something called as an expander on which uh, the expansion happens to create the proper shape because the shape is where the whole flow of the exhaust gases will happen and balance and the whole thing has to be balanced properly. So the whole design which was worked out uh, by ISRO is taking shape uh, here at uh, Godrej. Uh, so, so we take our viewers further and like can I also explain them because you said that an uh, entire conical structure is prepared. Every micron and every minute detail I think is monitored by your team as well as by the team of ISRO. Uh, so your, is this similar to what you were saying that the yes, outside so structure is being prepared? The structure is now getting inspected over here and then what you see uh, on, on, on the left here is the expansion chamber where the expansion is done to create a proper shape and then again inspection uh, is done for the full cone. Uh, so sir, apart from uh, say Chandrayaan 3, uh, since you have been working since 1985 onwards, what are the other projects of ISRO that you know you all have contributed towards? So we also contribute towards uh, the cryo stage of the, the third stage of uh, LMB3 uh, spacecraft, which is the cryo stage. So hardware for the same is also manufactured here, and then there are some thruster components which we also manufacture and give it to LPSC. So, sir, are you all the only uh, only private company which is working with ISRO uh, for for the for getting spare parts or getting the actual engine put in place for ISRO? We are one of the large companies of the consortium. There are other companies also which are working with ISRO and contributing to the national cause. So we are one of the large suppliers of uh, the engine hardware components. Uh, so after what uh, we saw that, of course, Chandrayaan 2 had a successful launch, but the soft uh, soft landing on uh, the south pole of Moon failed. Uh, do you think this all eyes are right now on Sri Hari Kota, considering that you know this is expected to be a breakthrough? Because this technology will further help NASA as well to send a manned mission to Moon? Definitely all eyes are on India and uh, like Chairman said yesterday, there are several uh, changes what uh, uh, ISRO has done and uh, we wish uh, them all the best. 
all the wishes are with the country and uh, isro so hoping for the best tomorrow of course when it lands on 23rd of august uh, that's where we cross our fingers uh, so one last thing uh, we see that while things are assembled here in minute details i was also told by your team that it takes approximately 10 to 14 days because this vikas engine which goes in has to be minutely handled is there a particular temperature that you know has to be maintained how does the process of sending all the raw materials from here uh, to towards isro happen like what is the uh, whole process for that uh, it's it's uh, i wouldn't dwell into a lot of details but it's a slow moving process so uh, i wouldn't get into too many details on that but yes it's a delicate process to transfer the material from here to trivandrum and so one last question considering that uh, this entire process happens here can we say that uh, the raw materials or the main components are made here and then assembled the uh, at trivandrum is that how it works yes the hardware is uh, sub assembled over here what you saw uh, then it is again dismantled and packed into various boxes and then the final assembly happens at lpsc after various coatings and cleaning and uh, various tests are done over here so all the cold tests are done over here the hot test is done at lpsc and finally it goes to shri arikota i guess for the uh, installation to the stage and sir uh, is there any change that has been made uh, over the last so many years that you know you all have been working with isro technology is evolved we are seeing that now it's more towards atmanirbhar bharat uh, has there been any change we've seen over the last few years when it comes to the technologies being used india is making progress when it comes to the space technology we are seeing launches taking place every now and then uh, so how have you seen uh, how has the progress been over the last few years so while manufacturing has always been in india raw material was a challenge so uh, now uh, we have been able to indigenize the raw material also as a country also uh, the various uh, small tweaks which keep happening depending on the various space flights and an analysis done by the designers at uh, lpsc we keep changing the parameters over here keep changing the processes drawings and it's a collaborative effort uh, between the design and the manufacturing team over here to keep improving the process uh, that was mr manik with us thank you sir for guiding us uh, guiding our viewers through this so yes here it is the team uh, which has worked hard to get uh, this unit that is vikas engines in place which have in fact led the entire installation for chandrayaan 3 are quite excited to see what their fruits will turn into in the next few days from now uh, but yes all eyes towards chandrayaan 3 of course because it is the first time that india will be having sending uh, sending a man uh, an unmanned mission a unmanned missile towards uh, towards the south pole of uh, moon and which is where we will in fact see that It's for the first time that the soft that the soft landing is going to take place on Moon, and following which there will be research that will be conducted, which will help uh, the other space organizations across the world to get data and carry on for the experiments on the southern pole of Moon.